de Bourg. Oh, and I mean from Duke de Bourg. Um, they misspelled this uh, city's name for 400 years, but you know, we'll get over that. <laughs> and uh, then, why Jude? Uh, I am the CEO and the co-founder of Jude de Bourg together with my partner, Else Marie Marie. I'm an architect, she's in automotive industry, and we will build houses and cars and the whole society made out of jute, the most sustainable material in the world, we would like to say. As I'm an architect, I was um, having this um, housing concept, which now Boverket is supporting, uh, of affordable, transportable, small housing units. And I was looking for the most sustainable material. I thought it was maybe bamboo or something. Um, you know, a tree matures for 60 to 80 years, bamboo, 3 to 10 years, Duke 120 days. In Bangladesh, for instance, uh, they have three crops a year. You can have two crops of rice and one crop of jute, and jute fertilizes the soil, and you don't need to have any pesticides. So that means that you don't really take away land area from food production. That is a great thing, I believe. And also when it comes to the ecological point of view, it's so sustainable, really. Um, apart from the things I just said, if you compare it like eating a carbon dioxide, it's like 22 times better than hemp, for instance. So, you know, I, I feel confident, confident that if somebody would like to challenge me and find another material, that's very good, but I go for this at the moment. Okay, <laughs> so what will we do? Why do it more? Uh, what, what will we do? Uh, I'm the architect and my colleague is uh, automotive and also we have textile. And everybody knows that we are into some kind of a peak cotton. You know, uh, we have to exchange materials in this world. And so that, that's why we say we need to, it doesn't have to be all uh, jute, of course. It could be composite, it could be as many percentage of jute that you could put in anyway. It's the better way to do it. So that's why we also work uh, with um, composites and uh, to make these uh, cars and uh, etc. Um, is that two minutes? On the spot. On the spot. <laughs> Time management. Okay. <laughs> and I will also tell you that we are about to print a 3D tayar out of jute. What do you think about it? <laughs> for you. <laughs> Only for you. <laughs> <laughs> of course it does. <laughs> Of course it does. In fact, this, this guy is, uh, is uh, one of the partners in our research team who we just applied for to Vinova. Uh, so uh, that is one of the points. Uh, together with the automotive industry and the construction industry, where we find the synergies all together. And uh, my question is, how to tackle the IP issue before your business is financially stable? Because we are a small company. We, we feel great and large because we have so many great partners. But we are small indeed. And when we get forward in the research, we, we find different things. But the IP and the intellectual property and how to continue the business, because if it has to be inclusive business, we want to be included too in some way. So not all the others other take away you know, all the results that we've been working for free the last five years. You know. Do you have a question, an answer to this one? Um, yeah, sort of. Uh, you really have three areas to look at. One is the protection of the IP, one is how you get paid for the IP, and the third one links into them is how do you actually exploit the IP, not only through a payment. So on the protection side, the protecting IP is very expensive. And you all almost need to, depends on how the various la country legislations are, you can have a patent, say, in, in Europe or in the US, but you can't enforce it in certain African countries. It has to be registered locally. Uh, so that's what you need to do to protect it. And if you, to go back to the, to go back to the third point, if you house your IP in a separate vehicle, separated from your production site. You can then put get investors into the IP owning entity that are there to help you fund the, the application for it for patent, etc. At the same time, this solves the second issue of payments and your concern about inclusion. With the 
pipelines in the separate vehicle, you can raise funding for that, but you can also then, from this entity, license to other people your technology and your, your concept, which means that you can spread this on the web and make people use it, but they, due to the IP protection, you get the royalty back that are either then put back into the research or put back into funding local people who want to explore into IP. And um, IP law is not my, my strong quarter, but I think European Union, they, that the European IP, what is it, is it called, the protection something, they have uh, programs for this. The universities have programs, they scholarships, they donor funds to get into this. And if Jude's going to take over Cockburn, I suggest you to chat to um, OM's uh, CEO, because he might be very interested in investing in the next level of uh, material for or also for HM, and also make money on it. Money on it. That's my view, suggestion. Thank you. Any other advice from your IP interest? So if I, uh, if, okay, if you think you've made a big investment, rush out of the room and call a good lawyer. Uh, I'd be ready to pay him a lot of money. Now, maybe this is not the case. Um, maybe what you're doing is a small step. Maybe you're doing a bit of your gut innovation and you don't have to worry too much about the IP. Maybe you lie somewhere in the middle. Um, think of uh, checking with the World Intellectual Property Organization. It's a sister organization of the United Nations. And they have um, a department on IP for development, and they can guide you to understand whether you should rush for a lawyer or whether you should just simply let anybody use your, uh, you know, your, your your little, let's say, improvement or your little innovation. <laughs> and if it's somewhere in the middle, they will advise you what's best uh, for you, what kind of model is best for you, uh, and what you can do for the rest of us. Thank you. Is of course another option, and that is giving it away for free and ask for scholarships to survive. Mm. That solution fits as well. Do the speaker tour on how you develop them into a new product, etc. 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 That's a completely different business model. But since we are, uh, you know, reaching for new poverty, <laughs> I, I think that we need to uh, make some money to, uh, in order to scale up and do this and transform the world the way we would like to do so. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. I think it was great advice, great pitch. <laughs>